So I'm just heading out for a run now. Uh, I obviously have uh, my two training partners with me. Hello, cutie pies. So welcome back to another training vlog. Even though last week's one was a short, this is a small but longer. Going into the speciality uh, metalworking vice phone holder. Today's squat session is around kind of 12 or 15 minutes after I finished my last run of the run session. Uh, this is just some repeats in the run. It's, it's horrible to get good running footage. So if you do know of a way of getting better footage of me just doing a normal run session, besides getting somebody to come out and fly a drone or kind of drive a scooter along after me, uh, please do suggest it in the comments down below. The running session was a 1K, then into four 400 meter repeats with around 90 seconds or actually less, closer to 60 seconds rest in between each one, then a 1K to finish out again. The last 1K ended up being around 800 meters because one of the two dogs uh, started complaining <laughs> and basically stopped running. So yeah, they're nice easy run sessions. Most of the runs at the moment are kind of three, four and 5K runs just at a steady pace. Uh, then once or twice a week, I'm doing some 400 meter repeats or 800 meter repeats. They can be done in a track as well. We're right at the start of this, this training block now. So aiming for the, the run and the squat to be done sometime in August, towards the end of August, ideally, uh, we're very much in a prep phase at the moment. So that's where you're seeing tens in the squats. It's where you're seeing uh, 5Ks, 4Ks and 3Ks for the run. And everything is just kind of generally building an aerobic base, building a work capacity. So it's when we get into the heavier squats and when we get into the faster runs, uh, we're well able to handle it. You'll see some taping on the ankles. That's nothing to do with injury or anything like that. It's just making sure the ankles and knees stay nice and rigid, making sure I'm not kind of injuring anywhere uh, just in that prep phase. Uh, I'm wearing a chest harness here. I keep my phone in that. I just cut a hole in that so I get some footage of the running just on my camera phone. Then I'm wearing a heart rate monitor underneath. So this is about the cheapest heart rate monitor and watch combo you can have. It's from Decathlon. It's around 20 euro for the watch and the heart rate monitor. I am looking to get either a Polar or a Garmin unit. I'm trying to find one that will do kind of real-time pacing for me and just get some GPS data off it. So what I've been recommended by a few of my aerobically based athletes is a Polar. Um, I can't remember the model name, but one of those. If anyone does have the inside track on a Polar watch and heart rate strap, please do let me know. The massive advantage, obviously, of doing your squat session 10 minutes after your, your running session finishes is that you basically don't need a warm up. So empty bar 70 kilos, then working weight for today will be 100 kilos, three sets of 10, around 90 seconds rest in between all three sets of 10. So those of you who aren't new to the, uh, the Darafit squat school, these are going to be pretty shallow. They're going to be very much focused on knees forward and knees staying forward, just targeting my quads as much as I possibly can, especially with the running and stuff at the moment and getting a lot of posterior chain and getting a lot of hamstring and glute work in just in my running and the running drills and the running warm ups. So I really want to focus on my quads for the squats. This is how I'm spending my rest time in between sets. So around 60 to 90 seconds in between the sets of 10 and the warm up sets. I'm really focusing on nasal breathing as much as I can. I've been waiting for an operation on my nose for the last kind of six months and, and I haven't gotten a date. I haven't even gotten to see someone yet. So I'm just really focusing on only nasal breathing. It's quite restrictive. Um, and particularly as the sets go on, I feel like I really, really need to breathe. But um, it is something I'm, I'm kind of actively working on, just getting my control over my heart rate getting control over my breathing a small bit better will obviously be massively helpful for the run and for the higher volume squats as well so 
So you'll see here as I'm breathing in between sets, I'm actually pulling my cheek up and I'm pulling my nose up. I just have a bit of detached cartilage uh, on my nose that kind of falls down and stops me being able to breathe. So that makes a massive difference when I do pull that up. I'm able to breathe a hell of a lot easier. So I meant to include this in last week's training vlog. We're going to do something slightly different for this series. Because we're in the weird and wonderful uh, Sikistan High Performance Training Center South Division. Uh, we're going to do a little show and tell on weird stuff that's in the background that you guys want to figure out what it is. So this door has been asked about before in previous training vlogs. There's loads of weird stuff over on the shelves. So every week or every training vlog, what I want you to do is comment whatever it is. What's that weird thing on the shelf? What's the door of a car hanging on the wall for? We'll do like a 30 second show and tell. This one's up first. This is the door of myself and Gert's Nissan Micra and Toddy's Nissan Micra. We drove this car to Mongolia and back a few years ago. Uh, so the car's name was Betty Davis. It was a 2002 Nissan Micra, nicely tuned up and ready for racing across the desert and across the world. Uh, the stickers are just from our sponsors. And yeah, when we were scrapping the car, I took a door, Toddy took the bonnet, we took the petrol cap as well, and a few more bits off it and then scrapped it and crushed it into a little ball. So comment down below whatever you're interested in and we'll do a show until on the next week. Thank <laughs> you. 